Your so-called stimulus will make things worse Just more of the same, more incentives perverse It is a challenge for this theory to explain why entrepreneurs are fooled, because they're good at foreseeing what's going to be demanded by consumers, what can be produced profitably. So to explain a systematic error by investors, we have to, I think, uh, refer to something common across the economy, namely monetary policy and, and distortions of interest rates. Real savings come first if you want to invest. The market coordinates time with interest. But that just pushes it back a step. Why are they fooled by the lowering of the interest rate? Uh, in a world where everybody had perfect foresight, you wouldn't see these kind of mistakes being made. But in a world where people rely on the price system to steer their uh, activities, a false interest rate can have real effects. That new money is for real loanable funds, but it's just inflation that's driving the ones. Now, if it were always the case that when the interest rate went down, it was a trap, you would think entrepreneurs would learn that. And so they wouldn't respond. They would just say, oh, it's cheap credit. It's not going to last. There's no sense making any investments that are going to last any longer than the typical cheap credit period. Uh, so it can't be the case that this scenario explains all movements in the interest rate or all movements in the economy as a whole. There has to be a kind of what nowadays economists call a signal extraction problem, where some movements in the interest rate you have to respond to or you lose profits. Right? So the interest rate is normally a reliable signal. Um, and so it makes sense to respond to it. And even if uh, there's some chance that it's not going to last, you might want to make some response, but there may always be some entrepreneurs who are plungers, who respond to it in a big way, and if they are making profits for years and years, others who are standing on the sideline may start to pile in. I think the idea that the false boom piggybacks on a real investment opportunity helps explain why it's not always easy to sort these things out at the time. After the fact, it's easy for us to say they went too far. But at the time, it's not clear whether this is a genuine opportunity or something you have to be very careful about. Whether it's the late 20s or 2005, booming bad investments seems like they'd thrive. I do think that the, the collapse of 2007, 2008 does fit the scenario pretty well, uh, the Austrian theory pretty well. But I don't think every uh, aggregate fluctuation in the economy does. There is a danger that once you have a business cycle theory, you'll see, which spells out a certain scenario for how the cycle proceeds, that you'll want to apply that to every fluctuation in the economy. Uh, so we have to be on guard about that. We have to actually look at, into the data to see what's happening. Is this an Austrian type of business cycle? Is this particular cycle characterized by cheap credit, by artificially low interest rates, which are hard to measure, by the way. I mean, we don't have in front of us the reference point. This is the equilibrium interest rate. Here's the current market rate. And we have to try to infer what the equilibrium would have been. In a sense, it would make this theory nonsense if it were always the case that every movement in interest rates were a cheap credit boom, because then it shouldn't fool anybody. For the theory to make sense, there have to be fluctuations in the economy that are not following that scenario, but are following some other scenario. You must save to invest. Don't use the printing press, or a bus will surely follow an economy depressed. In the background of Hayek's theory of the business cycle is a th implied theory, he wasn't really very explicit about it, of normal growth in the economy. And normal, healthy, sustainable growth in the economy comes from capital accumulation, more tools for workers to work with, basically more raw materials for workers to work with, so more capital per worker. Prosperity comes from those things, from people deferring consumption and uh, allocating resources to uh, uses that will produce more stuff later on. And when later on arrives, now we're better off. I'm done, that's a wrap. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play low interest rates. No, it's the animal spirits.